All right, let's talk about the quick poly group brush. So for as most things, if you go in here to the brush palette, you will find it somewhere in here. There it is right there, quick poly group, look for the hand. Uh, but also you can hit B on your keyboard to open up the brush palette, Q to narrow it down to the brushes to start with Q, and you'll see P, uh, it's the only one in there, but you can hit P and now you have the quick poly group brush. Now, if you just start clicking on your object, you may or may not see things start to happen. This is very dependent on brush size. So if we undo that, back to where we started, if I'm clicking up here on the shoulder, you're gonna see it's not doing anything. However, if I change my brush size to something bigger by going up here uh, to the top of the menu and changing your brush size, or what I like to do is tap S on my keyboard, and then that puts the, the draw size menu underneath my cursor. Uh, if I make that bigger and then tap in the shoulder area, you'll see it'll give us a shoulder poly group. Now, this brush does work with symmetry, uh, world symmetry anyways. So if I tap X on my keyboard, that's going to turn on my activate symmetry. And by default, that is in the X axis, which is across my model left and right. So now if I tap here, you're gonna see it's gonna do polygroups across both sides. And then if I wanna change that polygroup, I can undo it and then just click further down the model until it gets me the polygroup that I want. Essentially what you're aiming for is just that basic poly loop and it's going to evaluate your model and give you a polygroup in, in, a, in a way that makes sense. So here we have our shoulder polygrouped here, and now I can just continue working down my model. I can polygroup at the uh, elbow here. Let's go ahead and click a little further down. There we go, we've got a polygroup at the elbow, and then a polygroup at the wrist, maybe a little further down. And then you're gonna see when I get to the thumb, uh, it's gonna start doing some wacky things. If I try to click on this finger, uh, it may grab you know three fingers instead of just one that means you need to adjust your draw size. So let's undo that. Let's tap S on our keyboard. We'll change our draw size down. And now when I click on the thumb, it's much more controlled. So we can just continue clicking down our model. So here's a finger, 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 finger. And then we're gonna go through here. We'll say, click on the knuckle area here to get us a poly group. And then right through here, we'll get us the bottom there. And there we go. We got some pretty good looking poly groups. And like I said, it's across the X axis because we had X symmetry turned on. And I'm gonna cut in here really quickly to tell you about the alt function of this brush. So I have a new poly group here, and if I just go down my mesh without holding down alt, it will add more poly groups. And then if I go back up uh, and start clicking in these poly groups, you're gonna see it's not gonna overwrite uh, any pre-existing poly groups, it's just going to add to it. So as you can see, I'm moving up, it's leaving the other poly groups alone and just kind of adding more and more uh, poly groups as I click through here. However, if I hit Control W and then start, you know, going down my mesh, if I hold down Alt and start going down my mesh, it's going to act about the same way. It's just going to add more poly groups. However, if I go up back over these poly groups, holding down Alt, you're going to see it's going to start adding that last poly group that I had. So you can see uh, as I go up the arm, all of these poly groups are being merged as I go across them, as long as I have that Alt key held down. So again holding down alt and making new polygroups. Well, alternate polygroups as it continues to create them. And then if you go back up over pre-existing polygroups, it'll start overriding those. Again, as long as you have the alt key held down. Now, if you if you want to, you can combine polygroups. So for example, we clicked here and then we clicked here and let's see, you know, so we click over here with a bigger draw size maybe, there we go. So now we've got all three, we got one, to three poly groups in this area. So if you hold down control shift with select rectangle and click between two poly groups, that'll isolate them. Control shift drag will invert it. And then I'm gonna control shift tap that one. Control shift drag to invert again. Control W to group visible. Control shift tap to bring everything else back. And now we've combined all of those poly groups. Uh, here's a fun one I like to use. Uh, if you go into, oh, that's by the way, that's the quick poly group brush in a nutshell. That's about it. So now I'm gonna show you different ways to refine your polygroup selections and then other alternatives to create polygroups uh, based on your geometry. So for example, if I go to B, Z, M, that's gonna grab our Z modeler brush. And let's say I wanna make these two squares right here the same polygroup as that blue one. How I can do that is gonna hold down Alt and start painting over the blue polygroups that I like. So if I hold down Alt and start painting, it's gonna pick up it's gonna start painting white in those areas. And if I let go, it's gonna make it a new polygroup. However, before I lit up my tablet, I'm gonna tap shift and that's going to inherit that polygroup. And I haven't let off my tablet yet. My pen is still on my tablet. So now if I drag over here and start painting, um, it's gonna paint those two blue. It sounds a little bit weird, but it's very powerful way to go through and just basically paint the polygroups where you want. So for example, in this elbow here, um, I can go through here. I'm, I wanna pick this lavender poly groups. I'm going to hold down alt, uh, start painting, tap shift. And then again, without letting go, just continue uh, painting through here. And then again, hold down alt. And then I don't have to tap shift anymore because I'm just inheriting 
uh, the poly group that I already had. So it's going to continue to continue doing that. Uh, or I can do the opposite. I can hold down Alt on this rose colored one, tap Shift to inherit it, and then just continue dragging, uh, and then hold down Alt and let go, and then hold down Alt and let go, and we can just continue painting with that poly group. So that's one way to go through and refine poly groups. Another way to do that, um, let's say we have uh, just one too many edge loops on this thumb. If I hold down Control Shift and tap this poly group, I can do visibility shrink, which you can see the hotkey for that is Control Shift S, and the grow is Control Shift X. So just think of Control Shift X as expand and Control Shift S as shrink. So with those two, what you can do is you can just, in this case, do Control Shift S to shrink and then hit Control W to group visible. And now again, we wanna combine these two poly groups, Control Shift tap between them, Control W, and there we go. Uh, again, if we wanna go through here with our Z modeler brush, hold down Alt, start dragging, tap Shift, and then just start painting. So very quickly, I can use the new quick poly group to kind of lay in really quick poly groups and then go and refine it with Z modeler or you know my visibility grow and shrink options. Now, if you wanted to, you could go through here if we hit W on our keyboard, for example, and control drag down our object, that will mask along our object using our geometry. This, the, by default, the transpose that's going to be used by default is going to give you a very soft gradient the more you pull. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit B to open up my brush menu, T to narrow it down to my transpose brushes, and you're going to see C is transpose classic. If you choose that one and then control drag control drag down your object, you're going to see you have a much harsher mask. Now you could control tap and blur it out if you want to. That's just underneath the masking. You're, there's a blur mask in here. That, that, that button will blur your mask as well as control tapping on your object will also blur your mask. But the whole point of this is to control drag down your object, control tap uh, in your canvas to invert that or go over here and say masking invert and then hit control W. That's group mask clear mask. And now using masking, we are able to uh, polygroup this area. And then again, just to refine this, I might go through here with my Z modeler brush, hold down Alt and then tap Shift, and then go through here and just paint uh, these polygroups to the uh, one that I want. Of course, you can also use visibility. You can hold down Control Shift, go into Select Lasso. We can go like across the knee here and isolate this. We'll do Control Shift X to expand. And then we can just clean up our visibility here like going through here so you can use poly polygons and visibility to kind of narrow down the poly groups that you like and then hit Control w to group visible and then you can just keep working down your object just hold down Control shift and then alt go down here maybe to mid ankle here um, and if that's too much do Control shift x to expand again okay that looks a little bit better we'll hit uh, maybe do Control shift x one more time and then Control shift alt there we go so we're just going through and refining these areas Control w to isolate this how you'd like uh, and then if you want to, you can continue. Let's go back to BQP, which is our quick poly group, and then make our brush size, you know, probably about yay size, and then go through here and see if we can't, you know, get some quick poly groups for these toes. Um, so you can, again, use the tool that makes the most sense for you. Let's make this brush size a little bit smaller. There we go. And then isolate this poly group here. Control Shift X to expand, Control W. There we go. So very quickly, we can start refining these poly groups. Or Control Shift tap this one, Control Shift Alt to get rid of these ones, maybe. Control W. There we go. And then Control Shift tap between these. There we go. And we're um, off to the races. Now you're going to notice something when I did that Control Shift Lasso. If I hover over an edge ring with holding down Control Shift, going into Select Lasso, uh, one of the features of these brushes is to isolate. Uh, an individual poly group. So what you could do, let's take our undo slider and just drag back. We're gonna redo the poly groups on the legs here. So let's say I wanna use the poly groups or the poly loops on my geometry. You, you could go into your Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over an edge, hold down space bar and say poly group, poly loop. And then you can just go through here. And I'm gonna hit control W just to group all this stuff. If I go through here and use poly group, poly loop, I can just go through here and just click and it's going to look at all my, it's going to go and just poly group all of these. And then if I, you know, we'll keep working our way down our knee. And then once I, if I want to start poly grouping these, if I tap once and then hold down alt uh, with my pen held down, it'll switch to a new poly group. And then I can continue just kind of working across my model here, filling in poly groups uh, or poly loops, I should say. And then again, Z modeler brush, hold down alt, start painting over this, tap shift and then inherit that. 
There we go. We'll hit Control W to give us uh, all one polygroup again. Another alternative is you can hold down Control Shift and select Lasso uh, isolates individual polygroups, like I was saying. So what we can do is we can go through here, like on the knee and on the ankle, maybe. And because these are no longer separated by their visibility, you can go in here to polygroups and then you can say auto groups. And because they're, the visibility is invert weld, it is going to give you new polygroups. Now, it's going to be different polygroups on both sides. So let's switch back to select rectangle. We'll isolate this one, control shift drag, isolate this one, control shift drag, control W, and that'll make both of these the same polygroup. So I can very quickly go through and just make these both the same polygroup. Now, we do have a spacer in between here now. So if we want to, we can isolate those spacers, say, auto groups, give them their own uh, po unique polygroups, and then we can control shift tap between these two polygroups here, and then hit control W to make it all one polygroup. Or like we were doing earlier, you can isolate this, do control shift X to expand, it'll expand both sides, control W to make it its own polygroup. So anyways, outside of the new quick polygroup uh, option, there's uh, you know, masking and polygrouping, there's Z modeler polygrouping, there's visibility polygrouping, whatever makes the most sense for how you want to arrange your polygroups. Uh, that's how you'd go about doing it. But again, BQP, make your draw size big, and then just go down through here and just tap on your model. We'll give you a pretty quick, quick result, and then you just need to modify your brush size uh, to accommodate the volumes that you're trying to hit. And then of course you can refine these. Again, Control Shift, Control Shift X to expand, Control Shift Tap to get rid of that one, Control W to polygroup that one, etc. So it's just another option to go through and quickly polygroup your objects.